welcome to News Desk with me, Kemini Nyamani. I'm on the program this morning. We'll deal with a, a, a couple of issues. Uh, we'll start off with the Ghana Integrity Initiative indicating the government is complicating issues by suppressing facts and information regarding the U.S. flag plane spotted in Tehran. We'll get into that matter. Also, Paul Afoko, uh, you recall, held his first press briefing yesterday where he urged uh, both factions within the party uh, to be uh, circumspect in their interactions with the media. We would look into that as well, as well as some 200 vehicles with DBLA number plates that were impounded in the Ashanti regional capital, Kumasi. Let's uh, get into our first issue of the day. The Ministry of Information and Media Relations has denied widespread reports that President John Dramani Mahama may have used a U.S. plane reportedly leased to his brother's company, Engineer, Engineers and Planners Limited, for official travels. The plane, owned by a small community bank in Uta, had parked last week at Tehran's airport, provoking questions about why an American plane was in Tehran, the capital of a country under U.S. Sanctions. Now, yes, how CNN broke the news on this program, the situation room. Right. I have over the telephone Associate Director, Center for Regional Integration in Africa, Dr. Vladimir Inchidanso, as well as Executive Director for the Ghana in Integrity Initiative, Vitus Azim. Thank you very much, gentlemen, for joining me here on News Desk. You're welcome. Right. The, the, right. I understand I have lost Dr. Vladimir Inchidanso. So I'll start off with you. Uh, Hello. Right. I'll, I'll start off with you, uh, Dr. Intridan. So, um, yes. why should it be uh, such? Why, why should why should there be such a fuss about this, especially here in this country? Oh, come again! The line is a little harsh. I, I was I was asking why this should generate uh, the the so the so many fallouts it seem to have generated in the country. If I you were asking what the implications are for the nation and the country, right? <laughs> I want us to start off with why it, it seems so complicated in this country well, with, with regard to this. It's a little complicated because, well, uh, the facts are to be stated as they should have been stated. If the facts are that the, uh, the president hired uh, uh, on the personal accord a plane to go and transact business, there's no problem with that. Uh, if even there are some politicians and on, on, on the plane to transact business, Ghana has no problem with it. And the Americans will have no problem with Ghana. What the Americans will be worried about is their plane having been hired. I think due diligence would have been made by the company that owned the plane, and that is where the Americans will be concerned. They will also be concerned to know whether the company that hired the plane had anything to do with the Iranians, which will be against American interests. These are the things that would be of concern to the international uh, system, as it were. But that Ghana should panic because I don't think that is the case. But I think what we need is a real fact. Is it that the plane was hired by Ibrahim and his company? Is it true that there were politicians on board? Is it true that government had a hand in it? Is it true that the that government business? These are the facts where we should come forward. If these are not the I don't think we should panic about anything at all. There's not going to be any repercussions on Ghana as a for our president uh, as a person. But what has this place Ghana between the United States and Iran? It is so because there are sanctions on Iran. They are not negotiating things. Since 1979, the relationship between Iran and the U.S. have not been cordial. And any um, gesture would be measured through the lenses of perception. Misperception, and so that is the worry. Why would a plane uh, registered as a uh, 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 law fly to Iran? I mean, it, 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 it raises eyebrows, and so that is why America is much concerned. They will be very much worried because uh, they are in the era of terrorism, and the enemy always wanting to use any subtle means. They will. 
And if the Ghanaian is involved, we also want to see a triangular connection. And that is why the Americans are worried. Mm. Dr. Njidazo, I want to have you hold on. Uh, Vitus, I'm, I'm glad you're, you're back over the telephone. But you feel government is complicating issues by suppressing facts and information regarding this U.S. Uh, airplane. Uh, wh why so? Well, when I listen to when I listened to your interview yesterday with uh, you or one other station with the inf means of information, he admitted that first they denied that there was no government official on the plane. Then in the evening they admitted that there was at least one government official on the plane. When they asked to know who that government official was, they said they wouldn't disclose the person, the person's name, because the person went on his, private, his or her private visit. Now, this is a public official joining a business team to travel. So that raises some concerns. Mm. If the fellow was doing nothing wrong, why is it a problem disclosing the person's name? Because it makes us to keep thinking that who could that be? Could it be the means of trade, for example, if there was a trade mission? And that points us back to the fact that if it was a trade mission, then probably it is true, it could be true that the plane was chartered by the government of Ghana. And then you go back and look at procurement procedures. Did it follow? Was it the best value for money for Ghana to have hired that plane? You see, so what I'm just saying is there are too many questions that the president, I mean, the government should answer rather than, I mean, the, the continuous denials because it continues to increase people's speculation. And that is not helping us. Mm. Look, Dr. Trudan, so with, with this background, with the background Vitus has just given us, does it change uh, your previous stance that this perhaps is not as complicated as it seems? Well, I think it's the, public, uh, the politicians who are complicating matters. And this is a very, if the, what the initial uh, stage was, that a private person hired a private plane and landed over there, if that is the, 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 that, that's the initial fact, then we don't have to worry at all. I mean, there's, no, there's, there's nothing about this thing. The Americans rather will be worried. And they will do their investigation. It doesn't concern Ghana. Ghana doesn't, Ghana doesn't have to take part in anything. But that the politicians are coming to say one thing and say I'm not, I don't think they are doing uh, well. I, I just don't. That's why the uh, Transparency International and the Ghana uh, Transparency uh, uh, Initiative is worried about the various versions that are being given. I believe the politicians, if they don't know the fact, they should leave it with those who can manage the, this uh, flow very well. I think it may even make the Americans uh, to live in some hidden agenda. And, and, and I think this is not the time to be trying to garnish uh, the facts, leave the facts as they are, and I don't think it will bring about any problem between us and the Americans or even the Iranians. Vitals, what, what would you expect government to be doing in, in this instance? You see, let, 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 me start, let me start by saying that I am not an international uh, person as such, but the fact that the plane was used by a Ghanaian who, who happens to be linked to, related to the president, I think it is also possible that it can influence, it can affect our relationship with the, with the U.S. Just by the nature of that relationship, that is one. But the other aspect uh, what, what, can you just repeat your question on that? Sorry. Right. I, I was asking, I, how would you rather government went about this? Well, I think that they should really check their facts mm. and put the, whatever is actually the situation in the public domain. Right. Uh, Dr. Chudansu. Yes. And, and w w with what Vital said earlier, the fact that we could be hurting our relationship with the U.S., it brings me back to the question I was asking you. Uh, Ghana, on, on one hand, is, is friends with both Iran and the U.S., but both countries aren't uh, particularly good friends. Uh, being in the, in the middle of both countries, what then becomes of the relationship we have with both of them in, in this particular situation? Well, the problem is this. There is a little confusion. At one point, we are saying the plane belongs to Ibrahim. At another point, we say it was released to him. Whichever is the situation, as uh, my friend has said, it will have some repercussions on our relationship. But as I'm saying, if the facts were as they were in the initial um, the messages that we had, that he hired the plane privately, 
I don't think because Ghana has a relationship with Iran. America has no problem with that. America would watch those who have relationship with Iran with uh, some eyes. I, I must confess, uh, but America has good relationship with us and does not bother about our relationship with Iran. But if the facts as are being twisted, when, uh, whether the president was on board, ministers were on board, and that we are going to transact and uh, uh, what call it uh, national business and you know that sort of thing. These are the things that will uh, spoil our relationship. So I agree with my friend. What is needed are the real facts. And, and, and the that is not right there. If there is nothing untoward against America from, for, with Ghana being involved. I believe what is needed now, right now, is for the ministers to stop talking, the facts to be put on the table in a very good diplomatic language, not lies, but diplomatic language in such a way that we distance the government from this issue we distance Ghana from this issue and leave the matter into the domain of international business. Period. But Dr. Judah, so if, if this was a trade relationship, if this was, was a trade, as, for lack of a better word, assignment, would no, there have been the, any breach of international the, relations? The line is breaking. Your question again. I'm asking, if, if this trip was was trade related would it would it have breached any international relations right. you're saying it's trade international relations if if the trip was trade related oh yes the trip is a question of trade and Ghanaian businessmen have every right to trade with any other country except if the Ghana government has placed embargo on those nations like mm -hmm. has placed embargo on Iran. Right. Well, so, what I'm asking is, having used a, a U.S. flag plane, does it breach any international relations, as far uh, relations uh, regulations as far as trade is concerned between uh, the, the three parties here? Uh, absolutely not. The U.S. is acting in accordance with international norms, not international law. International norms. Norms in such a way that if an enemy country is entertaining uh, my product, like the U.S. plane, I should be worried and I should make a noise. If another country is warming up to my enemy, I, I should be worried. These are international norms. And uh, they will take measures to, to, to study that. Um, that does not breach anything in international relations or international law. And so the U.S. is acting in accordance with norms. Uh, Ghana must also act with international norms. And that's all I'm saying. Uh, that they must put the facts well and, and, and clear this case mm. as quickly as possible. Vitus, do you necessarily agree with uh, Dr. Vladimir Nchidazo? He, I mean, he, he's an international relations expert, all right, but he comes across as though there's no problem at all for Ghana. And, and here we are, we're making such a big deal of it. Well, if we went through the right procedures before landing our plane there. I don't know if the story has changed, but I think initially the issues about with permission or without permission. So if, if it was without permission, that is a problem. But any time that a, na a native of another country is involved in a, a, an issue in another country, it worries the country. But the, the embassy would get involved to try to sort it out. So you cannot completely just say that it has no, Ghana should not we worried about it. Mm. Even if a, a citizen is arrested in another country, the embassy, our, our, our embassy there will probably go there and find out what has happened to mm. try to so help sort out the situation. So we have a, a situation there. And especially as I also heard that Ghana is trying to reactivate its diplomatic relations with Iran. So we do not want anything to happen that will delay that, 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 that process. And also, we are very good friends with America. They are helping us with the Millennium Challenge account money and all that. So we do not want to harm any of these people. So the interpretation that is given to whatever action has been taken could, to some extent, it may not be that serious, but it could eventually have some impact on our relationships with the two countries. Dr. Dr. Judas, so, so what can we do? I mean, the U.S. is investigating. What should we do as a country? Sit back and see how it unfolds? I'm saying we don't have to sit back. I'm saying the government must act and act well. I agree with my friend that if we rather act poorly as we are acting now, mm. 
changing, changing the post anytime, changing what the facts are anytime. It will bring more suspicions and things like that. In if acting, the US is very much worried. Right. They would send it. The ambassador will go to a minister of foreign affairs and complain right now. But it looks as though they are not very much worried now. But the fact that are being changed left and right may be a cause for concern. As Trump is saying, if we are establishing relationship with uh, Iran on the ambassadorial level, diplomatic level, the U.S. will be watching us quietly to make sure that our relationship does not mar. Yeah. The, 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 in, in acting, what should what should governments do? Governments should come out with the facts and give out the facts immediately. Let me give you an example. Right. In the 2006 uh, World Cup, uh, John Pencil inadvertently removed, after uh, we had won a match, removed uh, uh, an Israeli flag and showed it and twisted with it. It brought some kind of consolation uh, in the minds of the hearts of the Arab states. Clearly, uh, it was that this Ghana was supporting um, uh, the, the Israelis in all that they were doing their foreign states. Quickly, Nana Kubuado, then foreign minister, the Arab state countries which are represented in Ghana, and quickly gave uh, a speech in which he was telling them that this is an innocuous situation. Government doesn't have any hand in it, and therefore you don't have to be worried. It's calm towards it. In this situation, we are changing the, the story from time to time. And I think that this is the world. If this story is made straightforward and the government comes out with a, a, a better statement, mm. not from those little, little politicians who are changing the, the story, I think it will do well. The Ministry of Foreign Affairs should be able to come out right now. Mm. And, and tell us the basic facts. And I'm saying, if the facts are that it's a private matter, there's no problem in international uh, uh, relations at all. Mm. But if the facts are that we are sick and then we are, there is some secret around it and that kind of it is worrisome. Mm. Vitus, what do you think is the reason government has been shifting posts since this came up? I, I, if you ask me, I just, I just don't know why there's a difference between what uh, Mutala Mohammed says and what he's saying and. Uh, you know, on, 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 on. I mean, uh, I, don't, I don't think it's, it's, it's in good shape. I, I, I don't think they have better advice. Mm. Is, is, is this a sign of, of some sort of a cover-up of exactly what, who was in that aircraft? Well, the signal, the signal is that. The signal is that there is something uh, we don't know yet. And for us, um, in international relations, uh, if, if you play it that way, the misperception is greater. And, and, and uh, as my friend was saying over there, yes, it has repercussions. And I, I, I'm standing by the first official kind of uh, mm. uh, announcement. If that is the case, I have no worry. Mm. If that is not the case, let's come and come out. Dr. Jiran, so look at the situation with us now. We, we can't afford to, you, to lose both relations with Iran and the United States. Perhaps it's, it's time we, we took a rethink of our dependence mm -hmm. on, on help from outside our own continent. Uh, the main problem is, is that, I mean, uh, every country has friends and uh, quasi friends and then enemies. Uh, Iran is a big enemy of the United States. They're trying to patch up one with the other since 79. Ghana is now establishing very serious relationships. We have the relationship with Iran, a Greek matters and Islam. And we now want to cement that. And so definitely in the triangular kind of relationship, Ghana is a friend to the U.S. So the U.S. will be watching Ghana's move. Very carefully, extremely very carefully. And as a result, um, Ghana will have to play a card which makes the U.S. not clear our relationship with Iran. We do not do that. We can be punished in several ways, in a very diplomatic way, one way or the other. America may not say anything, but they will deny us a whole lot of things. They may also block our chances in several of the multilateral organizations in which they have a lot of power. For example, if IMF wants to give us a, they can, they can stop to me you know, put spokes in that kind of agreement and that kind of thing. That's why it's very important that you play your diplomatic card very well. But Iran is on good terms with Britain, for example, but America is not worried. This is why our diplomatic relationship with Iran does not, would not have worried America if we put pretty clean. So that is a worry. Mm. I'm going to say thank you to both of you. Thank you very much, gentlemen. Uh, we've been talking to Dr. Vladimir Enchi Danso, as well as uh, Vitus Azim of the Ghana, Executive Director for the Ghana Integrity.
initiative. Now let's move on to uh, something else where, well, the newly elected chairman of the opposition New Progressive Party, Paula Foko, says he would be neutral in the party's flag bearership contest for the 2016 election. In his maiden press briefing Tuesday, Paula Foko said he would not countenance infighting among aspirants ahead of the party's Congress. Take a look at it. And I'm also inviting all people who have become inactive, withdrawn for one reason or the other, to come back to the fold and contribute actively and meaningfully for the success of our party. The 2016 general election is crucially important to the Ghanaian people. From my extensive travels around the country, I have become aware that Ghanaians are waiting for the NPP. We cannot afford to fail them. It is for this reason that I think we cannot and should not allow narrow and parochial selfish interests to get in the way. Let me therefore make a passionate appeal to all those who plan to contest for the flag bearership position in the party and their supporters to stop the unnecessary media circus and rally behind the new leadership to reconcile and bring unity to the party. You will agree with me that whoever is elected to lead us into the general elections will need a united, strong and battle-ready party to achieve our goal of victory at the next elections. If we organize well, strengthen our structures and work hard, I have no doubt in my mind that we will return to our winning ways. I intend to be strategic in every action I take with power for the party as the ultimate goal. Well, in addition to that, all national executives of the national, the new patriotic party will today formally render accounts and hand over to newly elected officers to pave way for the new officers to take over the reins of the party. Now, Jake Obeche Bilam to and Free, former party chairman and general secretary respectively, and other executives lost their re-election bid at the party's conference in Tamale on April 12, 2014. Paula Foko beat Jake Obeche Bilam to while Kablenja from defeated Kujo Free at a delegates conference. And like you heard, at his first news conference on Tuesday, new chairman Paula Foko said the hand in over processes will begin Wednesday to make way for a comprehensive restructuring of the party. I have with me here in the studio Fred Amankwa Safo. Uh, he is with the new patriotic party. We'll deal with the amateurs over the next few minutes. Thank you very much, Fred. Thank you for having me. Right. Let's let's start off with your you had your new chairman. What do you think about his his game plan? <laughs> Thank you very much and um it is very refreshing. Mm. In fact, for, for quite a while, this is a press conference, this is a press statement from our leadership of the mm. party that I really have um, complete um, um, empathy for. I, I, I subscribe to almost all the things that he said. And um, to be able to bring all these issues up in one press conference tells me that we have a leader, we have a chairman that is um, ready to hit the ground running and not go on as um, business as usual. I see. Now, so Wednesday, we are supposed to expect a handing over process to start? Yeah, well, um, like you, you, you rightly said, um, there's going to be a meeting between the um, old and the new executives, mm. and I'm sure that um, I don't have any authority to speak but on that. But I'm what, sure what, that what, what, what does that mean? Well, after this is a new dispensation. Mm. Um, at any point when a new uh, generation comes up. Right. You must give way and you must account for what your stewardship and um, what you did the, the, during the last um, four years. So mm. it's just going through the normal party process and I'm sure it's also part of the processes that goes into any election or e after election. Mm. And so pretty shortly we should see the start of uh, the new game plan. The new game plan which you'll be part of because I understand you're, you're, you're aiming for the communications director. Is that Please, true? Please, I, I haven't said that and I, I, don't, I don't know where you got this from. I, mm. I, I'm a member of the party mm. and I'm ready to take up any responsibility that 
uh, my incompetences would 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 would, would mm. so describe. But uh, no, nobody has told me anything about any any position as that yet. I am ready for any position at all. I'm not I'm not prescribing any rule that I'll be given. I, I don't have any let's, information. Let's, that let's, let's just look at uh, restructuring e the NPP for Victory 2016. In restructuring, what, what do you expect from your I, I, th I think that if, if we haven't been able to win the last two elections, then we must do something right. Mm. Restructuring means that we need to strengthen the various positions in the party, right from the grassroots, from the polling station level to constituency, to regional and to um, 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 national level. We need to ensure that elected officials of our party are given the, 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 the leeway and the mandates and the resources and the training and, and, and the um, security to, to contribute their, their competence to the mm. party's um, development. Mm. I see Paul is, Paul is yet to you know, break down his game plan. But uh, let, let's go back briefly to the press conference he held yesterday where he's made mention of the fact that what the, you know, he's, he's told why it's important that they be circumspect in their interaction with the media, especially... Uh, th those that told the Nanado Alan Chermante lines, I mean, th that is what it, it boils down to. But the thing is, uh, is it possible? Well, um, the chairman never mentioned anybody. He said that we should be circumspect. And um, I've always had the view that in politics, we need to do what we call effective political communication with mm. respect with decorum and with circumspection. So being circumspect meaning that whatever you say today, you should measure it and see its impact mm. on, um, on the party tomorrow. Uh, but your chairman did say that they should cease fire. Of course, I mean... Right. <laughs> if it, no, you, the, the you, you, no, that you were telling me earlier he didn't mention, he didn't mention them. What, what, names. He didn't mention them. What he said was that if the aspirant, especially presidential aspirant, should avoid the circles, if I, if, if you, if I, I could get the word rightly, mm. in the media. So mm. we should... We should avoid being in the media, playing to the media gallery, because you media would push and get the news that you want, and the soundbite is good for your your, mm. your 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 viewership and your listenership. So he's cautioning us to be circumspect. He's not mm. gagging anybody, not asking anybody not to speak to the media. But you should be circumspect in what you say and, st and stop attacking each other's candidates or preferred candidates, so be it. And for me, um, it's, it's, it's one of the best we can have. Mm. Over the last two elections, we have provided a fodder for, for, for our political adversaries to, to feed on. Most of the issues that come on, 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 on air are issues that cropped up whilst we were jostling for presidential candidates of, of our party. And so now, throwing out the caution that we should be circumspect, I think it's, it's, it's in the right but, but, direction. But, but that is only talk. How watch your MPP ensure that indeed people are circumspect, they have very effective political communication with the media? Well, um, he also, he, had, he also made a allusion to the fact that the media should know when it is a party position and when it is a personal... Really? Yeah, well it's news and it, it, we it do is, the it news. Is, it is news. It is news. <laughs> but it's up to you to... Exactly. I, I agree. I agree that it is up to the politician to make sure that his statements are politically correct. Mm. And so, but he says that, look, if, the, if somebody s says something, no matter the position of the, par the person in the party, we should see whether it is his personal view or it is the view of the party. And I think that if we come on board very quickly to either disassociate ourselves from statements that are made by supposed leaders of our party mm. that do not augur well for the development of our mm. party, that will be the best. And I'm sure that he said strategic. If it is strategic, you're not going to be surprised. You've put mm. in place measures, systems, processes, and procedures to ensure that your target, your vision is achieved. You are not going to sit aloof and look on. Whilst you go along, there might be challenges. But that is how you become strategic in putting in place, um, um, uh, dotting the I's mm. and crossing the T's. So and some sure some that have actually that. suggested that uh, the communication lines should be checked. Perhaps we should have certain persons who speak for the NPP. Will that all go well for you? Well, I, 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 we've always had people who speak for, for the party. It is not so much about the people who speak for the party, but somehow everybody else seems to be in the frail. 
and we have pluralization of the, of the media, and so um, you can't gag anybody from speaking. What we can do and what we should do is to ensure that whoever is speaking must make sure that he's speaking for the party or he's speaking for himself. You should, you should be able to decipher and tell the public that, look, this is my own view of things. This is what I think. And then when it's a party position, you also say this is a party position. But be that it may, because we can't gag anybody. If anybody makes a statement that is not going to augur well for us, we need to come out immediately to disassociate ourselves or to clarify the issues as it may. Mm. Otherwise, I mean, the society, the people, the populace will think that this is coming from the party. And, and, and that's why I've been asking. It, it may be talk at this point. How are you going to ensure that indeed the people who come out to talk for you or people we, who we talk need, in the we, name we, of we, the NPP? We, we, we need training. Mm. Seriously, um, communication, like every aspect of, of development, cannot happen by, by just, just on the way. You have to be strategic in even your communication. You need to train everybody, right from the grassroots, those who speak on radio, those who write, those who make comments. We need to train mm. ourselves and know the effect of our communication strategy. If we allow things to go on, then that is, that is happening in nature. Nature is not efficient. Nature has so much, but we need to make sure that we have the right systems and processes in place to ensure effective political communication, not just communication. You can't be good, you, can't be, you, you could be a journalist, you could be anything, but if you're going to have effective communication, then you should understand that your communication has, um, mm. you, you, you encode, the receiver decodes the information mm. and gives you a feedback over the years, over the last eight years or so. You can, uh, you can agree with me that mm. our communication and the feedback, if the feedback for politicians is to get the mandate of the people. We haven't had the mandate of the people for quite a while. Mm. In fact, for our political tradition, we've had 12 elections in mm. Ghana. We have won three out of the 12 elections. Mm. So it means that if democracy is about sharing of ideas or is about ensuring that you have given enough information for people to, my word, acquiesce to, mm. to, to, to your principles and, and your programs, then we haven't been good at my, it. My concern also is with the people at your base level. You recall that in the lead up to your National Delegates Conference in Tamale, the, the sort of things that you know, people from supporters for the various candidates had to say about their, their opposing candidates were very terrible. And so at that level, Yes, so we, I talked about... Can something be done about yes, it? Yes, yes, something can definitely... We need to start training. We need to start inculcating into everybody... You, you, you in the can train all your grassroots we people? We should be able to. We should, if, we, if, we, if we want to have the mandate of these, the, the people of this country, then there's the need to do it. We can't assume that Maybe you should happen. look into implementing sanctions. Well, let me train you first. I cannot mm. give you sanctions when I haven't told you what you should do and what you shouldn't do. Let me train you. Let me ensure that we have a program that will go from probably from constituency to constituency and anybody that speaks for the party. But of course it is not, the issue is not even so much at the grassroots mm. because the grassroots only takes inspirations from the top. So the leadership at, 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 at the party, if, our, if, if the leadership will speak with respect, with decorum to each other mm. and with a lot of circumspection, we have, we, we, it, we will can Trust me that it will dovetail into the, 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 the behavioral patterns of the grassroots. But yes, we should train all of us. We should train ourselves and know that contemporary politics is not, cannot be done just by, 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 by mm. our, maybe if you, pedestrian knowledge in communication. It has to be effective. And I'm not talking about people who speak good English or who speak good Akan or who speak good Ebe or good Ga. I'm talking about people who understand the, the, the effect of whatever word they use as it pertains and affects the development of our party. We haven't been very good at it. And I think that um, the Paul Afuka administration mm. is going to go strong on that to ensure that Look, you either toe the line and be effective in your political communication or don't say anything at all. What, what will be uh, some of the very immediate challenges 
of the NPP you expect the Paul Afuku led administration to tackle when they are done with their handing over? I'm sure that change in any situation is not it's not um it's not a very smooth thing. Mm. People have challenges when it comes to changing. Personalities will change and even the concept of communication would have to change. And people have done a s been been doing something in a a certain pattern for a while and we are conservatives so trying to change is, is difficult I am not oblivious to some of the challenges that the administration might need I don't have any um, mm. role in the, in, the, in the party as I did I'm a member of the party that is where it ends but I envisage that um, we would meet some challenges but mm. we cannot we cannot we cannot we cannot say that because there are going to be challenges we are not going to implement issues and communication strategies that will be effective, that will be efficient, and that will and, ensure and that so we And so for you, lessons. one of the first things the Paula Foucault-led administration should look at is communication. Precisely. In fact, um, it right. that, 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 that is the base of, of um, democratic politics, mm. effective pol communication. No matter what you say, unity, yes. But you can have unity if you're speaking with somebody well, with mm. respect and decorum. If you're understanding the person, where the person is coming from, and then also making your, even if you disagree, making your point with respect, with decorum, and with circumspection. If we do that, then, because you can even have a strategy mm. that will lead us to win the 2016 election. Mm. If we don't have unity, and unity will stem from having effective communication. So all these things, all these three issues are very vital for us to win election I, 2016. I, I think that the NPP for uh, some time now, you'd want to call a very long time now, has been very much concentrated on its uh, internal matters and has left, uh, you know, the national matters alone for a while now. Mm -hmm. It looks like it's going to take some time to come back to that yeah. because you seem to have a lot of things to manage within your own party. Yes, yes, unfortunately, unfortunately, and we have brought it to ourselves. The people of this country are looking up to us, mm. but we seem to be um, having so many issues to deal internally. Mm. Um, so I think that one of the first things that um, this administration will have, to, will have to look at is to um, take the, the, the passion within the party to outside the party where we will put the government on its toes. We seem to have given the, 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 the um, uh, Mahama administration uh, a very leeway to, to, to operate mm. in spite of the huge scandal that, 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 that is coming up. We are concentrating in all our efforts, all our guns are, you know, let's, let's keep their, their toes to the is, fire is, and is ensure it, that they do the right thing to the people of this country. Isn't that bad for the NPP itself? It is. I mean, that, that I would not disagree with you on that score. It is, it is not the best. And so that is how come we need to um, clean the this, this place. Suddenly, it looks Let's like national the, matters do the, not matter to the NPP uh, uh, anymore. Uh, unfortunately, because there's so much jostling in the party and we need to get over this. We need to clean the slates. We need to agree to um, apologize to each other and to accept apologies in good faith. And we need to understand that we, we have a mandate. We have a vision. And our vision must be with, 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 with the, the, the all the um, strategies it, of, of, of management. But yes. it, for a voter, with all boring your words, jostling within the party, you still expect to recapture power? Be, be you still expect to win I my vote? I, 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 I would want the voters to understand that these are issues that will be, will be dealt with. And I'm sure that within the next three months, we should have a clear cut strategy, especially communication and unity and strategy when, as we go into 20, 2016. We cannot allow this three months to elapse without doing something very concrete and sending the right signals to the people of this country that this is a party that is poised, that is ready, that is willing, that is capable of salvaging the, 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 the economic and social uh, um, um, issue that we are confronted with at, the, at this point. So yes, um, issues have come and gone. I'm, I'm just urge that um, the party, especially rank and file of this party, would understand and agree that unless we all come to the same table and know that whatever our attitude, whatever our utterances are, can affect 
positively or negatively. And um, I hope that people are listening. I hope that um, Mr. Polakoko is, is a strong person and um, he's ready. I, I'm not sure he wants to go into 2016 and come back and, and give excuses. I mean, one of the things that I like in my interaction with him is that this party, people are not ready to take excuses. We've had a lot of excuses. Now is the time for us to do the talking. We have to do, um, walk our talk and make sure that we put in place the necessary measures to ensure that we win 2016 election without coming back, either going to court or going or, or talking about being, be, um, um, not, not be, be the election being mm. stolen. I mean, how, sh how soon should we expect the NPP back on national matters? And, and that also means that you may have finished settling your internal matters. No, we shouldn't. I mean, it, sh it should go hand in hand. I mean, it's, it's th we shouldn't wait until we've finished our, uh, our internal matters before we think of, 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 of looking at the, the national issues. I think for the past month or so, because of the elections, yes, mm. I would, I would a agree that there have been some few issues that we have glossed over. But now that we, the elections are over, I hope that the presidential, the parliamentary and the presidential elections in that party, I mean, uh, would not create the same uh, scenario. We have new leadership and uh, people of this country would, would, would be expecting that more potent communication, more mm. issue-oriented and more effective communication will come within and without the, um, within, within mm. from the party so that at least um, we can put the heat we can put the tools of the party um, um, and on. Right. Uh, Fred, we'll leave it here for now. Thank you very much. Thank for you for the opportunity uh, you gave me. News. This. Fred Amanqua is a member of the New Patriotic Party. And we've been talking about uh, restructuring the NPP. You're watching News this. I will be right back. glad you could stay here on news this now about 200 vehicles with dv number plates have been impounded by an operational team of the ashanti regional police command owners of the vehicles are set to have violated road traffic act 2004 act 6a3 and road traffic regulations 1974 li 953 the cop nathan kofi told journalists in Kamasa the action was to constitutionally enforce the rules and regulations of the National Road Safety Commission. Here's a report we brought to you earlier. Under Section 50, Clause B of the Road Traffic Act, DV number plate cars are unauthorized to carry passengers or goods for hire or reward. The use of the trade license for funerals, weddings, carrying children to and from school, consistent usage by vehicle owners outside business hours between the hours of 6 a.m. and 7 p.m., among others, is also an offense under the law. Ashanti Regional Police Commander DCOP Kofi Boache warned vehicle owners in the region to obey the law to avoid being arrested by the police and subsequently charged with an offense. He promised the regional command would effectively enforce the law. DCOP Kofi Boache read the part of the law to the vehicle owners and gave copies to them. No person shall, and this one is not me, no person shall use a trail license for the purpose not authorized by this regulation. And also under any of the following circumstances, when the Washeda Kase, who to be for trade plate and yet the Ebeke one, funerals. Say so you cannot buy use trade plate to funerals. Two, weddings. Three, carry children to and from school. It is a two hundred million cassette. Uh, can we remember go school? Uh, yeah, uh, prohibited. Four, carry family, relatives, friends, or any other person. Five, I don't hear me now. Consistently place straight lines on the same vehicle. 
like a registered number to be used daily by owners, friends, and relations. Among the culprits were some military men, police officers, immigration officers, businessmen, and public servants. Some vehicle owners who were ignorant about the law said they would immediately license their cars and educate their colleagues about the regulation. The vehicle owners were, however, freed without charge with a police warning letter and a promise to license their cars as soon as possible. Mahmoud Mohammed Nuruddin's report from the Ashanti region. Let's get over to the telephone now, and uh, our Ashanti regional correspondent is joined us from uh, Kumasi. Hello, Nuruddin. Hello, Kemini. Uh, tell us, uh, give us a quick update on this uh, situation with the DV plates. Yes, Kemini. Mm. All the cars that were impounded uh, were discharged with warning letters from the police, and that that which means that if any of them uh, is arrested, they would be processed before court. Kemini, uh, the whole issue was that, you know, before the, the Easter, mm. the regional police command and then the, nat the regional national road safety commission came together to embark on this operation. You know, the national road safety is expected to educate and sensitize the general public on issues regarding to road traffic and uh, they have been doing that and so the police have to uh, the police have to also enforce the law and that was exactly what they uh, they did and uh, they were able to impound these vehicles and so uh, they would continue with but this no, what what regulation were those people violating? You asking where I'm asking, they were driving? To? No, what regulation had they violated? I mean, there is some kind of issue. Right them. now, yeah. what's the police made mention of the fact that they, they outlined a number of acts the. Uh, the persons who were arrested with the DV number please were, viola were violating. The question I'm asking is, in, in uh, regular English, what, what is it that they were violating? What, what regulation was it that they were not abiding by? All right, some of them are driving after 6, 8, 7 p.m., which is not allowed, and some also uh, were carrying more than one person in a car. We are told that uh, according to the law, you are not supposed to carry more than one person. If you are really doing a business, you know that those who sell cars, even if you are selling a, with a car, you're, going to, you're sending it to the garage, you are not supposed to take more than one person. The driver is supposed to drive uh, it to the, uh, the, 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 where they sell them. and. Some of them uh, didn't do that. What they did was to carry more than one person, and others were also driving at the wrong time for mm. the wrong purpose. So no, my understanding that is that this is supposed to continue. How, how have you know, persons who drive with DV number please responded to this operation so far? I mean, can you come over again? I'm I asking have the line is too It's bad. terrible. I, I understand that. I'm asking uh, how persons who drive cars with DV number police are responding to this operation by the Ashanti Regional Police. What, what has changed after yesterday's arrest? I mean, there is a noise I have lived here. Right, we would we'll, we'll end it here for now then. Thank you very much. Uh, Mahmoud Mohammed Nuruddin joined us from the Ashanti region. I'm totally grateful you stay to the R uh, on News Today. So I'll see you again and, and on News Today at midday. Uh, thank you very much. My name is Kimini Yamani Amana. Goodbye.